It had no windows, it had no doors, half the floor was missing. It was just like, what on earth has happened to this place? Hi, we're Ray and Andrew Bright. Welcome to our new home, which we renovated from an old ruined museum. We're a retired couple from the UK. Uh, we've, we've now been in Madeira for about two years a location that we actually found by mistake, but we really were quite lucky that we found this place because it's, it's a wonderful island. I've always had a dream of living by the ocean. In England, that was just not possible because house prices there are so expensive and to try and live by the ocean, you'd have a sea view which was like you know, miles away through some buildings. Here, we were able to achieve my dream of living by the ocean. Yeah, the ocean in the UK is brown. The ocean here is blue. So now we're downstairs. Um, this building used to be a museum. So basically, it's a relatively new building that was built in 2002, but it was built to look like a building that was in the 17th and 18th century in, in Madeira. So the stone and everything, the windows, and, and what was inside the building was very much like a 17th and 18th century building. So typically this was the kitchen, but in the corner over here was a big bread oven uh, where they used to bake the bread. Um, here, there was a very, very small window because glass and everything was expensive and a door. We knocked all that out. Um, there was a wall that came around here to cordon off part of the room and keep it warmer. We knocked that wall down and we now have uh, two bedrooms and we also have in here an office space and a family bathroom which none of that was there before By nature, we're both outside people. We like being outside. If we retired in the UK, you probably have four months of the year that's dark and wet. Yeah. And we'd spend all our lives indoors, and that's not a retirement that we kind of look forward to. But I think we'd always talked about it, but I don't know if we ever really felt it could happen. COVID came and kind of changed our lives, mm. didn't it? I think it changed our perspective on life. You know, people say life is too short, but when you're young, Life is so long, you have all this time in front of you. And there comes a point where you just say, you know what, what's the worst can happen? If it doesn't work out, we'll just sell it and we'll move on somewhere else or come back to the UK. So we're now upstairs in our living room. This beautiful room did not look like this the first time we came to see the house. It was actually quite a spooky place. There was boards on the windows, the door was boarded up. Diablo. Just imagine what it's going to look like. Can't wait. It's just freaking it's daunted like... by it. I think it'll look amazing, but it's like, wow, it's just everywhere I look, it's something so to do. Everywhere the opening here had no doors in, so it was very windy, the ocean was very noisy. Everything had been ripped out, so they'd ripped out the ceiling, they'd ripped out the fireplace, it had wooden floorboards which were rotten and creaky, there was cobwebs everywhere. I 
think really for us what started the journey was because my son and his wife, in COVID, they were living with Naomi's parents and it was a very small space and nobody's allowed to go outside. And when COVID allowed some travel, they decided to buy a house in Northern Sweden to Lapland and they bought a house for 8,000 English pounds and they renovated it. And at that time, because of COVID and travel, we couldn't really visit them, but they had a YouTube channel and we've watched their videos and we think, oh my God, we want that life. It looked so magical. And we decided, right, this is it. We're going to move to Sweden. <laughs> I mean, it's, there's lots of nature, the lakes, the, the, the property in Northern Lapland was very you know, cost oh, effective. so beautiful. But it's it so was, cold. But yeah, it was cold. It's so cold. <laughs> Your next door neighbor's Father Christmas. However, you know, it's, it's freezing. <laughs> and we kind of overlooked that part. Yeah. So as it turned out, it was lucky that we couldn't go and visit because if we'd gone through with it, I think it would have been an issue. So back in 2021, it had been for sale for five years and they'd been reducing the price, reducing the price to get it to a point where they could sell it. So we paid about 220,000 euros for the building in 2021. Um, it started off at least 100,000 more than that but that's what we paid for it. Then we had to buy the tea rooms as well, which is another whole story. Um, and then we had to figure our costs of renovations. And as it turned out, we paid about the same again for renovations, because as I say, it was walls and a roof and that was it. Um, so total cost probably to us is around 440, 450. Now, is that typical of Madeira? It's like anything in life. If you buy a house as we did, which is frontline to the ocean, that's gonna be much more expensive. If we went up into the mountains, it'd be much cheaper. But if you go up into the mountains, it's much cooler. If we bought a house that had doors and windows, that would be much more expensive. So it's, it's kind of all relative. Also, the north side of Madeira is a lot cheaper than the southern side. The southern side is a lot more populated. That's where all the shops are. That's where all the supermarkets are. But this is now very accessible with all the, the tunnels and so forth that's been built in Madeira. Um, so for us, it was, it was totally acceptable for to have a house like this with the character frontline to the ocean. I, I don't know why most things in life that I've ever done, I've always done with a degree of caution. You buy some, you buy a house with a view of, I'll be able to sell that or, you know, but for some reason, we just, we just went for it. There was caution, but not like, will it work or won't it work? We were just being careful as what we did, but we just, there was never at any point we thought this may collapse and it could have collapsed at any time. And it was interesting because we talked about it quite a lot and we talked about it a lot with family and we kept saying, oh, maybe we should wait. We hadn't quite got the finances that we needed in place to mm. retire, for you to retire. And we were like, we need another £100,000. And then my daughter said to me, why do you keep talking about it? Just do it. So we got an estate agent round. He valued the house at £100,000 more than we expected it to be. And we thought, right, let's put the house on the market. And that was the, that was the start of it becoming reality. Madeira in a little village called Ponta del Garda and this is on the north coast of Madeira. Now for any expats you're always told you want to live in the south where the weather is warmer and it's a bit busier, you're close to Funchal but we fell in love with the north of the island because of the the beautiful mountains, the ocean, the nature and it's also quieter and we love the quiet. 
when we retired here, part of what we had to figure out is how much it was going to cost us to physically live here versus our budget and everything else. Uh, so when we originally started looking at living here in 2020, and when we made trips here, food was a lot more cheaper than the UK. Things in the short period of time that we've been here, we've noticed a big change. House prices have increased significantly. Food prices here now are pretty much the same as the UK. And if we bear in mind that everything has to come here on a ship, that's kind of hardly surprising. But Madeira still relatively, compared to mainland Europe, is, is a poor island. But if we take things like electricity, water, sewage, uh, all those things are much, much cheaper here than in the UK, much cheaper to the tune of uh, our council tax in the UK, which was street lighting, bins, uh, police and things like that, was based on the size of the property and that was 2,000 pounds a month. Here, it's, uh, and I'm, I'm serious, it's about 10 euros. If we had the luxury, I would like to have been here all the time because being here and seeing things, the things that you see that you don't feel are good, look good, your choice was bad, or that quality of that's not good enough. We dealt with one contractor to do everything. So we didn't deal with a plumber separately, electrician separately, builder separately. Um, so we didn't choose any of the electricians and so forth. One of the tradesmen wasn't as good as we'd liked and if we wouldn't have chosen him. So now we're in what used to be the tea room. So when it was a museum, people would come in here and there was, there was five or six tables down through here and they would come in here for a tea and a coffee, whatever, when they visited the museum. Um, we have always liked to keep fit and train, so we turned it into our home gym. Uh, this was in fact the worst condition building uh, out of everything. The windows were rotten, the, the ceiling had half collapsed in. Uh, it, was, it was a real mess. And uh, we actually lived in here for three months when the house was being renovated. So there's a shower in here and a toilet in here. And uh, so uh, it's now our home gym, which is our little playroom. So good. <laughs>